Hello and welcome, it's Pamela here and I'm back with another art journal tutorial. I'm doing one of my monthly spreads and this one is for April. I'm using my Arteza large mixed media journal which is perfect for art journaling with rice paper. And even though it will take a variety of mediums really well because it is a mixed media journal, I always like to start with a really white background behind my quite transparent rice paper so I always start with a thin layer of white gesso. So as you can see I've got three sheets of the rice paper from the collection in front of me and I'll be tearing out different pieces to make a collage. So I just ripped my papers by hand. You can use some water from a thin paintbrush to make that easier if you like, but they're pretty easy to rip anyway. And it's a better idea to rip your papers rather than using scissors, just so when you lay them down on your page, they blend in nicely rather than having any kind of sharp lines. So once I've got all my elements ripped out, I just want to now adhere them to my page and I'm using transparent gesso for that. I apply a quite liberal layer both behind the rice paper elements and also a layer on top. And I just want to show you how I apply especially the larger pieces. Rather than putting a layer of gesso down on the page and then placing my element on top, I kind of hold my piece in place and just lift up the corners or half of the piece of rice paper and apply some gesso and then once it's kind of stuck down in place I'll do that on the other sides of it. This gets it or keeps it exactly in the place that I want it. So I do like to show everything in the video especially as I like to show new techniques and I kind of think that my videos are really good for people that are just beginning art journaling as well but I know um, if I show too much they can get a bit boring if the video goes on too long so I've kind of edited it here so that you see me apply the first few pieces and then you'll see me apply the last piece but I've gone around and applied all of the pieces in exactly the same way of course I do hope that people enjoy watching my videos and will take away some new techniques and ideas from them, see new products. But I have had the odd comment where I've been told that they do get repetitive um, where you know I was showing the whole process of applying the gesso before. So it's hard to please everyone all of the time. I'd really appreciate that if you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd like to know like when I'm going down the right line, I guess. But it can be hard to know if I'm going down the right track would probably be a better way of saying it. If I don't get any feedback, so please leave me a comment and let me know if you think there are things that can be improved on or if you enjoy the videos just the way they are. I have tried to make them a lot shorter pretty recently, but um, yeah, I consider myself, I'm pr still pretty new to YouTube, so it's all been quite a learning curve. Hopefully I'm getting there slowly but surely. But yeah, just please give me some feedback. Anyway, enough of that. What you just saw me doing was around the edges of the rice paper. I was just um, applying some undiluted gesso just to blend it in to the paper more and to the paper of the journal more. And that can also really tone down like the vibrancy of the paper as well. So at some points I did kind of drag it in over the image as well. Now I just kind of want to tie everything in a bit and because there are quite a few bees on the rice paper I'm using this honeycomb stamp with the sepia coloured archiver link and I think this like really kind of is really nice to cover up the like extra white space that's on the paper and I think it just kind of pulls a theme all in together. I just called that a honeycomb stamp, it's actually a hexagon stamp. Um, the next one you'll see me using is a dotted stamp by Finnebear. 
and I'll be using that with the Bluebird Archiver link and just kind of more using that in the middle of the page. At this point I hadn't actually decided what technique I was going to use to add colour to the background but I definitely knew I wanted something light and hopefully translucent so I was still assuming that I'd see the stamping from underneath. I'll play some music now while I continue doing that and I will be back shortly when there's anything else that I think it's important to note. So now I want to add some extra texture to my page and for this I'm using Prima's Light Paste and a technique which is totally new to me anyway and that's adding colour with Lindy's Magicals. I often add colour to my texture paste but I often use impasto paints or Something along those lines, acrylic paints, but this time I just thought it'd be really nice to try the magicals out and I think that's what art journaling is all about really. I think it's the best place to try out different techniques and just get a feel for new products. Because of the bees on the rice paper, I'm kind of thinking like that's quite a nice theme for these pages and I'm going to use a hexagon stencil by Tim Holtz which is similar to the stamp design as well. So I've decided I'll try to make a kind of ombre effect on the honeycomb by placing a darker paste kind of around the bottom of the texture and then the lighter paste more on top and around the sides of what will be the honeycomb. I don't know how it's going to look, I mean it could end up a big mess but this is what art journaling is about, is just trying stuff so yep here we go and we'll see how it turns out. One thing I would say is if you are going to add the Lindy's Magicals into any texture paste you just need to be careful to really mix it up well so that all that pigment is mixed in with your paste otherwise you will have all the kind of different colours still showing as random pieces of pigment and you just saw there that I've applied the lighter colour and I think it does give a really nice ombre effect and I'll definitely be doing that again um, I think it would look really no nice over a floral design to have kind of two-tone flowers so yeah I'm really happy I tried that. I think it's something different and I really like the way it turned out. So I apply that to a few places around the art journal spread but as you can see I'm kind of running a bit low on it so I mix some more up although typically my phone stopped recording at that point but I basically just done exactly the same thing when I you'll see that I kind of place this bit and then we'll cut to the next segment but basically I mix up the paste and the Lindy's Magicals in exactly the same way again and I just place two more pieces of stenciling just so my pages are all balanced out and there you can see that those extra two pieces of stenciling are on I used a heat tool to set them you can let the texture paste just air dry but a heat tool will definitely hurry it along a bit so now i've got all my texture on the page it's time to 
go in and add some colour to those white spaces and for this I'm using a Derwent Inktense pencil. This is basically a watercolour pencil I guess um, and I've just kind of scribbled it around the page in various spots and then I use a water brush to kind of activate it and move it around. And I was thinking of doing a kind of blue colour with maybe bits of yellow but then when I started I decided I really liked the way it looked so I just continue adding more and more. I add some really vibrant spots all around the honeycomb as well and I really love the way it turned out. I hope you guys think it looks nice as well. And the Inktense pencils, when applied as a light wash, are still translucent enough to show the blue stamping underneath, but I think the yellow just gives the whole spread a really sunny look. Which goes perfectly with the bees and the flowers. And I think it just ended up being a really joyful page, just perfect to represent April and the start of spring.
So once I'm happy with all the colour on my page, I just want to use a darker colour pencil to make a kind of frame for the page and this will draw the eye inwards. I'm using the Inktense pencil in Baked Earth to do this. And I'm just really lightly scrubbing the pencil around the edges of the pages and again I'll use my water brush to activate it. I just want a really light effect but you can add as much or as little and make your frame as big or as small as you like. So the page is almost complete now, with just a couple of steps left. The first one is adding a sentiment to that space there. And I'm using the foam letter stamps by Tim Holtz along with some black archiver link. The sentiment will read, spring is in the air. You'll see that once I go to stamp out is and in, and I need that eye again. For some reason, the, I can't remember what they call it, but the dot on top of the eye is just refusing to stick to my acrylic block. But I don't let that defeat me. You'll see that I come in holding the eye with a pair of tweezers and stamp it that way. So as they say, where there's a will, there's a way. So just before we reach the final step, I just want to remind you, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and feel free to leave me a comment. The engagement always helps my channel to be seen by more people, so I'd really appreciate that. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more papercraft and mixed media tutorials which are uploaded every Wednesday and Saturday. So we are now on to the final step of this art journal page. And because I added the sentiment in black, because it matched with the black on the bees, but I kind of think it is standing out a bit too much. I want to blend that in a bit. So I'm going to use some paint splatters and I like to do this from an acrylic block. I have basically just used black gesso and watered it down quite a bit on an acrylic block. And then I'll use a small thin paintbrush just to kind of flick it off in the areas that I want it. I think this really gives like quite a lot of control and it's not too messy. So this is my favorite way of adding splatters. Once I'm happy with the amount of black splatters that I've got on the page, 
I'll also do the same with some white gesso that's been watered down just to kind of tie all those white bits on the flowers in as well. And I think it gives a really nice effect. I'm really happy with how this page turned out. I think it's just gorgeous and colourful. I'm loving the flowers. I love the bumblebees. I just think it's really vibrant and definitely hails the start of spring. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to see close-ups of the page, stay tuned until the end. But that's it from me for now. Take care. Bye-bye.